In this lesson, we're going to cover two major types of calculations using the Arrhenius equation. The first is a graphical linear analysis using the straight line form of the equation. The second uses a variation called the two-point form. The Arrhenius equation we introduced during the last PowerPoint relates the rate constant k to temperature through an exponential relationship. In this equation, A is a reaction-specific constant known as the frequency factor. It's multiplied by the mathematical constant E, which is raised to the negative of the activation energy for the reaction, divided by the ideal gas constant, and by temperature in Kelvin. We can get rid of the exponent and make the equation easier to work with if we take the natural log of both sides. I won't show you the derivation, I'll just show you the end result. The natural log of the rate constant is equal to the negative of the activation energy divided by the ideal gas constant times the inverse of temperature plus the natural log of the frequency factor. This rearranged form of the Arrhenius equation actually fits a straight line equation relationship, y equals mx plus b. Here, y equals the natural log of k, the rate constant, and x is the inverse of temperature in Kelvin. The slope, m, is equal to the negative of the activation energy divided by r, and the y-intercept is the natural log of the frequency factor. So if we use experimental data to calculate the rate constant k at a variety of temperatures for a reaction, we can use this linear form to determine the activation energy and the frequency factor for this reaction. We would graph the data of the natural log of rate constants versus the inverse of temperature, and we should see a straight line. Let's look at this in action. We want to determine the activation energy and frequency factor for the decomposition of ozone gas into molecular oxygen and the oxygen radical. To do this, we have experimentally derived rate constants that were measured in the laboratory at a variety of temperature conditions. We take this data and calculate the natural log of each rate constant and the inverse of each temperature. We can then use a spreadsheet program like Excel to graph the transformed data and determine the best fit straight line equation for it. Here, the natural log of our rate constants is plotted on the y-axis, while the inverse of each temperature value is plotted on the x-axis. The straight line equation is the best fit equation determined from a regression analysis done with the spreadsheet program. In this case, we get y equals negative 1.12 times 10 to the fourth x plus 26.8. We take the slope and y-intercept from this equation and solve for the activation energy and frequency factor. Remember that slope is equal to the negative of the activation energy divided by the gas constant. We can rearrange this equation and solve for activation energy. Here we have the negative of our slope, negative 1.12 times 10 to the fourth Kelvin, times the ideal gas constant, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. The negative of a negative gives us a positive value, and the Kelvin units in our slope and in our ideal gas constant cancel out, leaving us with joules per mole. We can convert 9.31 times 10 to the fourth joules per mole to kilojoules per mole by dividing by 1,000. Our activation energy for this process is 93.1 kilojoules per mole. We can also calculate the frequency factor using the y-intercept. We need to get rid of the natural log here, so we raise both sides to the base E. A 
a then is equal to just e raised to the value of the y-intercept, in this case 26.8. When we enter this into our calculator, we get 4.36 times 10 to the 11th. The units of the y-intercept must be the same as the rate constant units. On our table of data, the rate constant units were moles per liter to the negative 1 times seconds to the negative 1. The last example required the use of many data points of temperature and rate constant. If you only have two data points, though, you can still use the Arrhenius equation. You just have to use a slightly different form. This is the two-point form of the equation where the natural log of a ratio of two rate constants, K2 and K1, equals the activation energy divided by the gas constant R times the difference between the inverse values of two temperatures, T1 and T2. We can use this form to calculate activation energy or an unknown rate constant or temperature. The frequency factor is not a part of this equation, however, and we can't solve for it using the two-point form. Let's look at an example of how to use this equation. In this example, we're asked to find the activation energy for the reaction of nitrogen dioxide and carbon monoxide to form carbon dioxide and nitrogen monoxide. To do this, we're given two sets of temperature and rate constants. We'll set as our first temperature, T1, 701 Kelvin. The rate constant, K1, is simply the rate constant that corresponds to this temperature, 2.57 moles per liter to the negative 1 times seconds to the negative 1. This leaves our second temperature point as 895 Kelvin, and the rate constant that corresponds to that, 567 moles per liter to the negative 1 seconds to the negative 1. And we're asked to find the activation energy. Because we have just two sets of data points, we'll have to use the two-point form of the Arrhenius equation. We can plug in our data, and we can simplify for each side. On the left, the units on rate constants cancel out. We divide 567 by 2.57 and take the natural log to get 5.3965. On the right, we follow the correct order of operations and simplify inside the parentheses first. 1 divided by 701 Kelvin minus 1 divided by 895 Kelvin gives us 3.092 times 10 to the negative 4 Kelvin to the negative 1. The Kelvin in the inverse temperatures cancels with the Kelvin in the ideal gas constant. We can then multiply both sides by 8.314, our ideal gas constant, and divide by 3.092 times 10 to the negative 4. We'll be left with our activation energy of 1.45 times 10 to the fifth joules per mole, or 145 kilojoules per mole. To summarize, there are three common forms of the Arrhenius equation, the exponential form, the linear form, and the two-point form. The two forms that we commonly use for calculations are the last two, the linear form and the two-point form. We use the linear form when we have more than two sets of temperature and rate constants. From the graph of these data points, we can solve for both the activation energy and the frequency factor. We use the two-point form when we only have two sets of data, and we can use this equation to solve for activation energy or temperature or rate constant. 
We can't solve for the frequency factor using this form, though.